Brothers and sisters, it's a joy to be with you for the worship of God. Our scripture this morning is from Isaiah 60, the first five verses and then verses 11 through 16. The prophet speaks to the people of God in exile and tells them they have a bright future within the city of God. Christians interpret this chapter as referring ultimately to the new heavens and earth at the end of time. The new heaven and earth is the city of God to which all nations bring their cultural treasures for the enjoyment of all. Let's hear God's word. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. Our gates shall always be open. Day and night they shall not be shut so that nations shall bring you their wealth with their kings led in procession. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve you shall perish. Those nations shall utterly be laid waste. The glory of Lebanon shall come to you, the cypress, the plain, and the pine, to beautify the place of my sanctuary, and I will glorify where my feet rest. The descendants of those who oppressed you shall come bending low to you, and all who despised you shall bow down at your feet. They shall call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas you have been forsaken and hated with no one passing through, I will make you majestic forever, a joy from age to age. You shall suck the milk of nations, you shall suck the breasts of kings, and you shall know that I, the Lord, am your Savior and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I suppose that if you looked hard enough, you might find a chapter of scripture somewhere that needs the doctrine of biblical inspiration to shore it up a little. But nobody needs a doctrine to tell that the Holy Spirit is in Isaiah 60. All you have to do is read it or hear it. All you have to do as a preacher is to stay out of the way. So much light in this chapter, so much glory, so much of God's glory rising like the sun, so many kings and queens in all of their splendor, so much of the world's treasure pouring into the city of God, all of it carried in royal procession through gates that never close. The treasure is premium quality and it comes from every direction. Ships sail in from the west with gold and silver. Ships move in from Tarshish with Jewish babies in the arms of their nannies. And from the east, the gifts of the Arabian tribes come in overland on the backs of camels, camels which are the ships of the desert. Gold and frankincense come in with the tribes through the gates. It's Israel's homecoming. It's God's glorious revelation. It's like a wedding shower where everyone brings a gift. And not just any gift. These are the treasures of the people who bring them. These are the things they are known for. When lumber comes through the gates to rebuild God's temple, it can't be Michigan pine. It's got to be Lebanese pine or Lebanese cypress. The lumber has to come down from the north in Lebanon because lumber is Lebanon's glory. It's Lebanon's specialty. It's what the Lebanese are known for. 
People bring their glory into the city of God. They bring what they're famous for, things that cause others to flourish. Kings and queens come through the gates and their nation's cultural glory comes in with them. In Isaiah 60, Israel's homecoming is a revelation of who God is. And so all the banners are flying and all the trumpets are sounding and everything is lit up as on earth's first day when God said, let there be light. Now the writer of this inspired drama calls out to a people sitting in darkness. Israel is trapped in Babylon. Back home, her cities are ghost towns. In Babylon, she's as homeless as Cain. She's camped out along the rivers of Babylon, weeping over her bondage, weeping over her homelessness, weeping over her terrible vulnerability to Babylonian guards who know how to taunt and hurt. Hey, you with the harp, give us a tune. Hey, Jew, sing us one of your Jew songs. Israel is depressed by her sin, depressed by her bondage, depressed by her terrible homesickness. Israel is like somebody too depressed to get out of bed in the morning. But in Isaiah 60, it's a new day. And now the glory of the Lord is going to rise in the east. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Years ago, my mentor, Douglas Nelson, Presbyterian minister, attended a performance of Handel's Messiah in Edinburgh, Scotland. It was December and darkness covered the earth as it does in that month, in that land. But the musicians kindled the light of God's grace that shines from just about every page of Handel's score. My mentor was especially moved by the bass soloist whose singing that night seemed to come up from a well of sorrow and love that was desperately deep. In the newspaper the next day, there was a story about him. It said that a few hours before the performance of the night before, the bass soloist had gotten news that his son had died in a car crash in London. And yet the singer decided he needed to go forward with his part in the music. And some of us sitting here know what he walked out onto the stage to sing and why he needed to sing it. These are the words to his recitative. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the peoples. But the Lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen on you. My son is dead, but the Lord shall arise. My heart is broken, but the Lord shall arise. Everybody in the Middle East has someone to hate, but the Lord shall arise. The church of Jesus Christ is in Babylonian captivity, but the Lord shall arise. Isaiah is talking to the people of God, and that means he's talking to us today. He says that dawn is coming, that God is going to rise like the sun, and that God's glory is going to shine. And what is this glory? What is it that God is especially known for? What is God's specialty? Brothers and sisters, God is always out to save. God is an exodus God, a wilderness God, a God of manger and cross and resurrection and Pentecost. God's saving goodness is like Lebanese lumber. It's God's specialty and God glories in it. God saves people so that they can start to flourish and God loves it when they do. 
Israel's rebelliousness that got her into exile turns out to be a means of grace because God sticks with her and saves her. God had chosen Israel to be a blessing to people of every tribe and tongue and nation. And so here they are now, streaming into the city of God. Revelation 21 shows us the fulfillment of Isaiah's vision. At the end of time, the city of God descends out of heaven so that God may dwell with us here. We don't go to heaven. Heaven comes to us. It's a second Eden, but now it's also a city because for all this time, the treasures of the nations have been pouring into it through gates that never close. In a vision lovely enough to break your heart, Revelation shows us that up ahead, after centuries of tribal feuds and racial arrogance, after centuries of militant nationalism and renegade terrorism, after we human beings have just about silted history full with the debris of all of our antagonisms, after that, God will descend to us and make his home with us. Once more, God will say, let there be light and there will be light. The city of God is so full of light because it's so full of God. The city of God is so full of glory because it's so full of God's plans for making others flourish. The city of God is so full of grace because it's the residence of the Lamb of God who has taken away the sin of the world. When the city of God descends to us, we find that there isn't just one gate on the east, no. There are 12 gates, each of them stands open, and beside each is an angel of light wearing a look of welcome. And who are, whom are they welcoming? They are welcoming tribes and tongues and nations, royalty, all bringing their treasures into the city of God for all to enjoy. The treasures that were once a source of leverage over other nations or a source of cultural arrogance or of cultural imperialism. These treasures have been approved for entrance into the city of God because they have all been washed in the blood of the Lamb. On it goes, a procession through the gates of the city. Marching in the parade are nations who once battled, tribes who had once feuded, clans who had once grappled with each other in a nightmare of resentment that seemingly could not end. But here they are, marching together into the city of God. They are marching by the glory and light of God. The city of God needs no sun to shine in it because God is its light. It needs no moon because the Lamb of God is its lamp. God is always saying, let there be light, let there be light, as on earth's first day when the morning stars sang together and all the children of God shouted for joy. So again, God lights up our darkness with his wondrous news that salvation is coming. Salvation has come. Salvation will come all through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Brothers and sisters, even on a sunny first day of October, some of us are heavy with sorrow and loss. Life hasn't turned out as we had hoped. Our child is floundering. Our job is depressing. Our marriage long ago lost its juice. Some of us carry secrets too heavy to bear, but too scandalous to disclose. As a minister of the Church of Jesus Christ, I know that there is a broken heart in every pew. 
But to all of us and to myself, I have just one thing to say. The glory of the Lord is going to rise upon you because God is always out to save. Saving is God's glory. Saving is God's specialty. Saving is God's treasure to the world that God loves. We may be trapped in Babylonian captivity of any of a dozen kinds. There may be forces out there or in here that we desperately want to be released from. And so this glad summons of God comes to us. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is going to rise upon you. This is the truth brothers and sisters, this is the truth that we need to take to our hearts and take to the table of the Lord as we commune with Christians all over the world. Let us pray. Gracious God, rise above our sorrow, rise above our loneliness, Rise above all that depresses and confuses and frustrates us. Rise above our sin. Save us, O God. Your children call to you through Jesus Christ. Save us. Amen.